The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss. And as you can tell by the state of my stubble, I am deep into finishing my upcoming book, 100 More Orchestration Tips, in time for its release on March the 10th of this year. But I just thought I'd quickly share a few choice tips with you here on YouTube. Like this question, which gets asked a lot in the orchestration online community. When should you use an A clarinet versus a B flat clarinet? B-flat clarinet is the default choice in orchestration. Choose the A only when scoring in keys of 2 to 6 sharps for extended periods of time and or in technically demanding passages. Why did you write this piece for A clarinet? Asked one of the greatest contemporary music clarinetists of the San Francisco Bay Area of a composer friend of mine who'd written him a solo piece. My friend explained that she'd wanted what she understood to be the darker sound of the A clarinet for her work. Do you mean like this, he said, picking up his B-flat model and playing her piece as darkly as she could have wanted. She told me afterward that she'd learned an important lesson that day. This is one of my favorite anecdotes to share because it illustrates the difference between subtle perceptions by composers and practical execution by musicians. Of course, the A clarinet does have a subtly darker sound than the B flat, but a competent player can easily introduce that darkness into the B flat as well, just with the shape of their embouchure and voicing. In reverse, there should be no avoidance of using the A where appropriate, simply because the composer is afraid that it's not subtly brighter, like the B flat. Clarinetists can easily compensate for these minor differences in timbre, and may do so without even thinking about it, let alone being asked. So the only practical concern about the choice between A and B-flat clarinet is really in helping the player simplify their fingerings in sharp keys. On top of this, the orchestrator should consider the transpositions of these instruments and how they affect the playability of either model. To help solve this problem, let's consult the clarinet circle of fifths. Concert pitches ring the outside of this chart, while the recommended models and their transposed keys circle the inside. As you can see, the B-flat model has the most range, with the ability to comfortably play around 8 keys, while the A clarinet is home to only around 4 or 5 keys. Trending toward C major, the B-flat adds sharps and the A adds flats. The two models meet around G major, which is A major for the B-flat clarinet and B-flat for the A clarinet. If you're writing a piece that modulates to the 5 like a sonata allegro, then you may want to use the A clarinet for G major, because the music modulates to D major, which is four sharps for a B flat clarinet, but only one flat for an A. But if you're modulating to C or F, then use the B flat, as much as to keep the most familiar instrument in the player's hands as any concern of key. The same modulation rule applies to the enharmonic gateway of concert F sharp or G flat. In works that modulate to the five, use a B flat clarinet which after all will only be playing in A-flat major modulating to E-flat major, four flats to three flats. On the other hand, if your piece modulates counterclockwise, like to concert B or E major, then use an A clarinet, which will be modulating from their transposed A major to the keys of D or G. In this equation, the bass clarinet has no place. While a few a bass clarinet models were built back in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and one or two instrument builders make new A models today, for all practical purposes the bass clarinet is a B-flat model only, so the best that a craft orchestrator can do is to try to avoid long, devilishly tricky scoring in passages using five or six sharps or flats. Likewise, as the E-flat sopranino clarinet has now virtually replaced its sister in D, there may be little alternative for players in tackling complex fingerings on a regular basis. For the standard clarinet, though, the B-flat is really the supreme model. If you're scoring music with no key signature, tonal or atonal, 
that doesn't make incredibly complex technical demands on the player, then the default instrument is really a B-flat model. Add to this the countless hours of band repertoire written in F, B-flat, and E-flat, not to mention the ubiquity of flat keys in jazz. There's a reason why a lot of the early R&B songs are in flat keys. So take it for granted that you're going to use the B-flat on nearly everything, except for key-centered tonal music in 2 to 6 sharps. All the same, don't agonize over the need to use an A clarinet in a pro or semi-pro situation. Players will own both models, and easily switch from one to the other, usually taking the nicely warmed beak from the model that they're playing and putting it onto the next one. It's not that there's any pressure on you to avoid using the A clarinet at all costs. Far from it. It's more that you should assign the A for good reasons such as those I outlined before. If the players hold on to their B-flat clarinets and just play right through your A clarinet passages, then that is on them to transpose at sight, and not necessarily on you to change the part for the next rehearsal. Clarinetists may occasionally choose to play through an A passage on their B-flat even in the most respected of concert repertoire, as in this excerpt from Brahms's Third Symphony. I'm going to get right back to working on my book now, but I'll make some time over the next few days to release a couple more excerpts as video tips. If you want to reserve your advanced copy of this book at a discount, then click the link in the info to jump over to the Orchestration Online website. And while you're there, check out a few of the other preview tips I've shared from the book. See you tomorrow.